Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines Tuning and Marine. In this video, I'm going to be installing the uh, uh, the camshaft, a used camshaft, back in the 3.0 liter it came out, uh, 3.0 liter engine it came out of. And before I do that, I wanted to show you something unique about this cam or interesting about this cam. So, here's the cam. And if you notice, the lobes are all wearing on one side. The, that was wearing kind of on the front. That was on the front. On the front. Front. Front, front, front side, and front. And uh, and by the way, I've checked the lifts on all these lobes. They're within the thousandths of what they're supposed to be based on the Mercruiser 3.0 specs. So this scan's okay. Um, but anyway, the fact that they're wearing on one side is uh, means that what happens on a flat tap, this is called a flat tap at cam. It's not a roller cam. And I'll show you that. I'll show you the rollers, uh, excuse me, the lifters in a minute. But the, uh, the lifters are designed to run to one side of the lobe because the lobe has a, like a tilt to it. And the lifter itself, on the bottom of it is concave. It has a, a like a dome, a upside down dome. So the fact that it rides on the tilt on the side of this lifter, on the side of this lobe with that tilt or that dome means that it, it the lifter spins in the hole. And it's designed to do that to equalize wear for the life of the engine. You want the lifter to spin in circles and wear even all the way around. If it just stays in one spot, it'll wear out much faster in that one spot, and it'll wear out probably within 20, 30,000 miles. So I just want to show you, the, show you the, the fact that all these are worn on the side means this, this, these lifters are probably spinning the way they're supposed to. Um, I've got another video where I did a Toyota with a flat tappet cam a few years ago, and I took a video of the lifters spinning. So I'll, uh, I'll link to that video in the, the description to this video so you can see what I'm talking about. I just want to point that out before I put this cam in, back in the engine. So the cam goes into that hole right there, goes in here. That's your, that's your front cam bearing. And the, uh, there's a mark right there on the gear. It's a very faint circle. Somebody's already marked it with paint, but there's a very faint circle uh, pressed into that metal there. And there's also a circle, um, somebody's marked this one too. Where's it go, where'd it go? Right there. You look carefully, you see a very faint circle right there in that paint. So. What you do, or you, the dot, let's call it a dot. So you line up the two dots. When you put this gear in, or put this cam in, you engage the gear so that when the when the two uh, gears, are, or the two dots have to be facing right at each other and, and with their closest point. So you'll have a dot here and a dot here. Not a dot, not a dot here and a dot over there. But the, 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 dot, the two dots should line up between, so if you go through the center of this shaft and the center of that shaft, a straight line, the two dots should be on that straight line. You just simple, simple, you line up the two dots. And that's how you put most cams in. Whether it's got a chain or a or direct gear, that's how you do it. This is an oiler. This is a uh, this is tapped into the main oil circuit in this engine. So that's a little hole right there spurts oil onto these gears. That's how those two, get, two gears get oil. So um, at this time, I'm about to uh, slide this cam in. And, and it's called, basically when you engage the two gears, it's called timing the chain or timing the cam. And uh, that's what I'm about to do. One more thing about putting used cams in. When you have a flat tap at cam like this and you, you reuse it, you must put the lifters that came out of the holes back on the same lobe that they were running on before. So when I take these engines apart, that's why you bag and tag. For example, this might be one exhaust. So if that's one exhaust, I create a bag, call it 1E, and put all the components, the lifter, the push rod, the rock arm, everything associated with that, that valve in that bag so that when I put it all back together everything goes back on the same uh, the same lobe that it came off of um, because what happens is the lifter and the lobe create a wear pattern and they sort of mate to each other if you then introduce a, another used lifter on a used lobe it'll wear out quickly because the patterns don't match and it's like it's just uh, it's, it'll, it creates hot spots or high spots that'll wear out quickly so you, you have to put it back on if you if you mess up and, and don't do it or you skip one by accident you better just buy a new cam and new lifters. New cam and all new lifters. You have no choice in that. That's uh that's something known by flat tap at cam users back to the 1970s. Um, in 1987, GM switched the small block Chevrolet from this type, of what's called a flat tap at lobe or flat tap at uh, cam, to roller cams. And the rollers don't matter because they don't spin. They stay in the same spot, and the rollers roll on the lobe. So the pattern is not as pronounced. They don't create a wear pattern. So you can. 
You can put a used roller cam back in the engine with a different roller roller lifter. Doesn't matter because they don't spin and they don't form a, a wear pattern for that load. And uh, so that's uh, that's something you should be aware of when you build an engine. You sh you, you should prefer a roller cam anywhere. They're much more they're much less friction uh, in that system. But again, I'm fixed to put this cam in, so uh, I'll uh, show you that in a second. All right, um, I'm now about to put this uh, three three liter of Merc Cruiser cam in, and what I'm doing is. Um, putting Lucas assembly lube on each cam journal. And uh, I don't smear a whole lot, just enough to kinda, this stuff is real thick, so it won't run off like oregano oil will. All right, so that's one bar one uh, journal. So let me go slide this, let me put this cam in. You have to be very gentle as you put it in. Try not to bang it around like I'm doing. All right, so that bearing, apparently all these bearings are the same size because that was a very relatively tight fit in that journal. So I'm going in, very, I mean, you're going to hit stuff, just got to go real slow and real easy. You can't avoid knocking into stuff. All right, so now to the next journal. So I'm going to lube it up. I don't put lube on the lobes yet. I wait and put that on the lifters, on the bottom of the lifters, and put it on at that time. All right, so now I'm having trouble getting this going in there. There it goes, just went in. So went in pretty easy too. Don't let go of it, it'll slip right through your fingers. All right, that's the second journal. Now I'm gonna keep on going until I get all the way in. Like I say, you, you're gonna hit stuff, just go gently and easy and it don't, doesn't hurt, doesn't do too much damage. If you want help, you can kinda I got a towel of this engine, but I can move this out of the way and kind of watch what I'm doing because I can look down here and see where the cam's at. Uh, now through, so let me, might help if I lifted the back of it. Here we go. So this engine is uh, such, I'm, I'm reaching down here with my fingers and kind of lifting this cam so it's making it a little easier to get through here. All right now I'm to the front journal. I'm going to lube it up. And then I'm gonna reach in here and work this thing on in the rest of the way. Whoops, I gotta time it first. So where's my mark? So my mark is right here. We gotta rotate it a little, little bit. This could be tricky. So my mark is right there. I think I want to be, I'll roll this gear out a little bit. I think it was right there. If you mark the, there's a, it looks to me like they got paint on the tooth. This is not the tooth, but they got paint on the tooth and paint in the groove. So it looks like if you, if you line those two up, it should go. So getting the, uh, this is a little tricky, so. Come on. Where's it at? Oh, there it is, right there. There it goes. Okay, let me get a light. Let's see what we're doing here. And where'd it go? Right there. So I've got the dot on the gear and the dot on the on the uh, disc gear lined up. And I know that because the two paint marks. So somebody's painted them. So if you get the tooth in the V, you're good. So now this uh, yep, this cam is timed. It's also all the way in the motor too. So this done, this cam is now installed. So that's how you install a cam. It's a, it'll be gentle, careful. And it's tricky to get everything lined up, but that's how you do it. All right, so these two holes are there for a reason. There is a, there's two screw holes behind these holes that there it is right in there. Let me send you this thing. Right there. So there's a screw hole in there and this screw in there. And that's what's called the cam retainer plate. So you have to put two screws in here through a plate into this block and that's what holds the cam from coming back out. So at this time, I'm gonna find the screws and uh, I gotta find the retainer plate, rotate it around the line up with those holes, put the screws in with Loctite and I'll uh, tell you the torque, uh, I'll tell you the torque for those screws uh, in, in the next uh, video segment. 
All right, the uh, cam is installed and the bolts that hold the cam in, there's a retaining plate behind the cam and the retaining plate's held in by these two bolts here, one in that hole and one in that hole. And these bolts are tightened to 80 inch pounds. That's not a lot. So um, I have an inch pound torque wrench and I just finished tightening them up to 80 inch pound. All right, so the next step is to put the timing cover on this. And uh, the reason I'm doing this, I'm trying to get the timing cover so I can uh, get the harmonic balancer in, uh, installed and test my tool that I, I built to uh, install the harmonic balancer. I want to see if that works. I bought a uh, new eight inch long bolts instead of six inch and uh, hopefully that'll make the thing work like it's supposed to. So I'll show that in the next video. All right, that's, that wraps up the uh, installation of the cam on a 3.0 liter Mercruiser four cylinder engine. Thanks for watching.